Hello, Internet. Uh, I'm doing something a little different today. Uh, so what we've got here <laughs> is I'm going to program, a, I'm making a tool, a little character manager thing for this MMO called Dofus. Uh, it took me about five hours in real time, just over. Uh, so I've got the video here going at, I think, eight times, it's just eight times speed. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to comment on what I did. Uh, the source code for this thing, by the way, is on GitHub. There's a link in the description or else I've done something really dumb and forgotten. I hope I didn't forget that. Uh, I'm going to use Blazor server for the thing um, for a couple reasons. Partly it's really convenient and easy to get started with something way easier than desktop development. I don't even know why people make desktop apps anymore. Um, <laughs> and um, also, uh, since I'm making that RPG game thing uh, with, with Blazor server, though I don't have a ton of experience with Blazor server, it just seemed like a, a, another way to gain more experience with that platform. Uh, I would do more with, with Blazor Wasm. Um, and so speaking of RPG game, where I may have called it Pet Game just a second ago, I need to get out of that habit. Uh, I opened that up to copy in some stuff for setting up the database. This, this kind of like boilerplate getting your application started, I never remember exactly all the syntax to do it. So I'm inevitably looking at other projects. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I pull up RPG game um, several more times uh, to, to kind of look at how I set stuff up there. Um, here it looks like I'm just making a character table so I can talk about. So here you can see on, on the left, that's that's a markdown document I have. And that's how I keep track of my characters uh, before this tool. Um, and the reason I do this is because I, I play with one friend in particular. And we're always looking for like, who's on what dungeon? Because there's a couple of these quest lines that take you through a bunch of dungeons. Um, and there's also these daily things. You can see that calendar icon where it says 100% for Blueberry. Um, about 25% for Brassica. Um, all my character names are named after like flowers and, and fruit and, and leaves and plants and things because I don't know. I needed some theme. I, I suck at coming up with names myself. Um, so anyway, th this is useful for me, you know, whenever we're trying to find dungeons, like, oh, who's who's on Dungeon X? And, and I scroll through this and I go, oh, this character, this character. Um, and then for the Almanacs, uh, what, 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 sorry, which is the name of where that, that calendar thing is, um, you have to do, they have a quest. There's a new quest every single day. It's unique for the day of the year. Um, sorry, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, all the way, December, whatever. Um, they have a, a totally different quest that you do. And you have to do 365 of them. You can repeat. So if you miss a day, you don't have to wait to hit that exact calendar date next year. But you have to do these quests 365 times. Uh, so I, some of them are more annoying. Every day it's a different requirement of what you have to give. Sometimes it's really annoying. Um, so. Uh, I own, like I prioritize the characters who are getting closer to completing it. So here, what I'm pulling up, I was laughing about this. The official Dofus wiki. So Dofus is a French MMO. Um, it is played in the U.S., but it's way bigger in French. I mean, they've made a movie or France. <laughs> they've made a movie. They've made animes. They make a ton of games. This company on Kama, um, but they do not have much English speaking presence, or not nearly as much as French. So even their official English website has out of date data. The largest wiki, English wiki. Um, here I'm launching the game to check on some characters just to verify some stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, okay, I know what I'm doing right now, so maybe I should talk about this. Uh, anyway, so I had to go. There's a, a French website called Dofus Pour les Noobs, which I love. Uh, that's the name, it's just so good. Uh, but they've got all the, they've got the best information. You have to run it through Google Translate or rely on what little French you remember from high school, if you took any French in high school like I did. I remember, it was nothing. <laughs> Um, so what I was doing a while ago, so there's, in addition to the, um, the, the, well, you can see the elements of the care, the, the main, the primary stats of the character, strength, intelligence, intelligence, strength, whatever, um, dungeon progress and almanacs progress. There's also those lock icons for different regions. There are a bunch of places in the world that you have to do quests to unlock. You cannot go to Moon Island until you do this mildly obnoxious quest. You cannot go to Wabbit Island until you do a less obnoxious quest, but you do still have to do it. Um, and so that's another thing where we'll be looking at, you know, oh, okay, we have some characters that need the Wah Wabbit dungeon, which is on Wabbit Island, but does my character even have it? And like the quest wouldn't take long to do, but when we're just looking for something to do, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, we'll wait for me to get this character there. So that's another thing I like to have is who has access to what. Um, unlike other MMOs like, or like WoW or something, um, they do no level adjustment of party members. Like you can take a level 50 person with a level 150 person. The max level is 200. It's always been, they've never upped that um, in, in the lifetime of, of the game. So it's been out since like early 2000s. Um, 
And um, yeah, so it's really interesting. It really, and, and you can contribute even with a huge level difference. Um, it's, I, I, I really like that. I don't know. I, I get why other games want to scale the, the levels um, and have more control. I mean, Dofus is a messy game. I'll, I'll say that too. It is not as polished. Um, me mechanic, maybe in some way, but that's not true. I don't know. It's a weird game. It's very different. If, if you haven't played it, um, check it out. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. No one's, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. I've just been playing this game since college. I, my goal in college, I was like, I want to find an MMO. I don't know why. Because people, everyone seems to have their MMO. There was like Ragnarok Online was big at the time. Um, yeah, WoW was kind of new at the time. And I was like, well, I want one that I like. WoW kind of bored me. Um, Dope is all the combat is turn-based, tactics-based. Anyway, I shouldn't be talking about that. I should be talking about the code. So I'm setting up the basic schema, it, it looks like. Um, we've got characters. Um, you can, so there's four elements in the game. I was hovered over a few seconds ago. It's gone by now. You can see that, oh, well, yeah, that's all going so quick. So you can have different elements, um, like what, what build do you want? And typically you do two elements. Some characters do one, you might do. And some, sometimes you do four. Sometimes you do an omni element build. It's rare, it's, it's harder, it's going to be more expensive gear. Um, but that's a thing you can do. So uh, anyway, so all those kinds of things. And the other stuff, so talking about unlocks, you, you saw briefly on the screen, I have just... I don't know. I, my schema isn't consistent. For some things, I was like, I'm going to have a separate table, like for elements. What elements is this character prioritizing? I did a whole separate table for that, even though there's only four elements. But then for regions to unlock, where there's like almost 10 or something, for some reason, I put each one as a bool column on the character. I don't know. In retrospect, that's a little silly, but it's all it all runs locally. So I am making this a web app, um, but it's all intended to run locally. I'm using SQLite. Maybe I'll bundle it up in Electron or whatever, or maybe even play with .NET MAUI when I was just deriding uh, desktop app development. Uh, maybe I'll try and, and publish it as a desktop app. I don't know. Um, I, when this video comes out, I don't know, 90% chance I haven't done any of that, and it's going to be the web app. Um, but, but anyway, so um, what was I even saying? Oh, since it's going to be running locally, I'm not that worried about performance. Like, you're never going to have 100 characters. And even if you had 100 characters, I still don't need to be worried about performance. Like you're not going to have a million characters. And that's where we would start to care about performance of the schema. So like, it's going to be fine. Uh, here I am manually entering some data just to test it out. Um, so you might notice there, the GUID is in lowercase. That's going to come back to bite me later. Um, I learned, so SQLite does not have uh, a GUID type in the database. So it stores it as text. And it turns out, because it's text, <laughs> And GUID to string gives you uppercase, apparently, I end up like stuck debugging why is why is not finding some certain things? Um, looks like there I've got the very basic like list. Um, yep, showing string. Oh, for some reason, yeah, I was, what, uh, yeah, that was something else weird. So I tried using um, annotations. You can see dan data annotations for the um, entity framework entities um, to say, hey, this should be stored as a, uh, you know, this is an enum, and by default, this would be stored as a number in the database. And I said, no, I want it text so I can read it, which is maybe stupid. Databases are not for you to view. So you don't need to optimize your database for view. Um, but, but there are pros and cons to doing string versus number. If you do numbers, you can accidentally screw up your database by inserting a new enum value somewhere in the middle of your enum that bumps all your numbers around. So either you explicitly assign numbers, or you can say, hey, I'm going to do the name, the text. I'll use the text of enum. The con with that is now you can't rename your enum. So, you know, pick your poison. Um, I tend to like to use string, but it wasn't working. Um, and I don't know why, if this is another SQLite thing, but I instead had to do the, um, there's like a, a code configuration way to configure entities rather than data annotations. And it's preferred to use that. And I understand why, but I was like, this is a super small project. I don't care. I just, I'm just going to use data annotations, but it ended up not working. Um, I also had some fun problems with uh, validation and it turned out I'm trying to remember what the issue there was. I think when I was kind of cleaning up, um, so when you make a new Blazor server project, it comes with like weather. It's this, this whole silly demo weather app. It's whatever. Um, I don't know why OBS flashed on screen. That's interesting. I wonder what I was looking at. Um, but um, anyway, uh, I, so I cleaned out all that stuff. And in the process of deleting a bunch of the stuff I didn't want that comes with the template, I ended up deleting the um, like Blazor runtime JS, I forget what it's called, Blazor something, Blazor server JS or something. And I didn't realize it. And so for a long time, I was like, why are my buttons not working? Validation doesn't seem to be working. Um, and so that was throwing me off for a long time until I finally realized what I had done. And I felt like an idiot. Um, 
But you don't have to listen to me struggle through that because it's all going super fast. Looks like I finished up um, <laughs> the basic how to use data. And okay, so I think this is where I ran into it. And I'm Googling, it's like, how do I use these data? Like, did I miss something? Um, now it looks like I was trying to use data annotations before using fluent validation. Okay, so I'm going through this, like, what have I done wrong? <laughs> it's been forever trying to figure this out. Eventually, I paused recording the video. So a lot of my going, like, trying to figure it out is going to be cut out. I don't know when that happens anymore. Um, but yeah, I eventually realized those. And I ended up calling in. So my girlfriend is more experienced with, with Blazor than I do. Um, so I called her and she was looking at the code, trying to figure out, because she set up fluent validation a bunch. Um, yeah, here I am being like, and at first I thought, you know, I had problem with data annotations on SQLite. So then I was like, okay, maybe the annotations uh, for validation, that's kind of the built-in Microsoft way. It was like, I don't know, maybe there's something weird with that and I should be using Fluent Validator anyway. So I switched to Fluent Validator. It still isn't working. So yeah, I think this is still at this point, I haven't understood. At this point in the video, I don't know what's wrong. Um, I think, unless I've now figured it out, looks like I'm adding some more rules. So either I'm doing that. Okay, yeah, here's me testing. So I'm like, does it work when I click? Like I added that console log shush for when you click the create button. I'm like, well, how is it not getting triggered? What's going on? I'm looking at, it's like there's no JavaScript errors. That's because JavaScript isn't running, right? I was like, do I need to scan the <laughs> dependency scanning, all this stuff? I, oh my God, I spent forever on this. Um, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Uh, these are the fun things that, you know, make something take five hours. What I thought I was going to do, I thought I was going to talk through this. I was like, I can probably knock this out in an hour or two. Um, I don't know. Maybe I could have. I used technologies I was more familiar with. Maybe not. Um, but so I was talking through a lot of it at the time. And then at some point I decided this video has gone on so long. I'm just going to try and do a speed up and talk over it thing, which I've never done before. You may have noticed. So I don't know, should I have edited the video some first? Arguably, yes. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is my first time doing such a thing. It is kind of fun to like, I don't know, just a little <laughs> digression. It's fun to kind of rewatch what I'm doing and, and think and talk at the same time. This is, this is and it, I like doing this. If you like me doing this, let me know. I would love to do this again. I'm already having fun. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying to, why is it not submitting? Oh my God, I'm still looking into this issue. People are saying this and that. I think at one point I asked ChatGPT. I don't know if that's on screen. Yeah, like, it's like, do I need a validation summary? <laughs> Maybe I don't need the, the, the find. Oh my God. It's so obnoxious. I will say, well, I, the thing about Blazor, yeah, here I am. How do I enable it? Is it something about Blazor server? Because it's, it's really hard. So there's, there's a number of problems. Um, Blazor is very new. Um, and it comes in like three flavors, is it, or is it just two? There's Blazor Server, Blazor Wasm. I guess that's only two. I don't know. There's Blazor, what they stopped calling Unity, but like with desktop. Um, and it's all really new. And that means the community support isn't very good. The IDE support isn't always very good. Microsoft themselves haven't hashed it out. So you get really useless error messages <laughs> sometimes. Um, I mean, you know, what can they do if I actually like deleted their entire JavaScript and, you know, like include this JavaScript file from, from the HTML. Like, okay, that's my fault. That's on me. Fair enough. But there are other issues where it's like, can you please give me something? I don't know. Frameworks like Angular, which I have more experience with, are way more mature. Um, like, you need to really, I don't know. It, there's, a, there's a greater requirement of you as a developer when you're using Blazor, I think. Um, but, I mean... Again, pros and cons. It, it, it's just cool to use C Sharp on the front end and back end. There are pitfalls they have. Yeah, this started throwing me off. I noticed the question mark going in there, and I was like, that for sure means we're bypassing the form post. Why is that happening? I don't know if you, you can see it on the on the URL there. Now it's covered by the, yeah, see so there's a question mark at the end. It says add character question mark. It's like something's not working here. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still looking into it. Oh, God. I'm trying to test this stuff. Google, or I was like, all right, I, I prefer DuckDuckGo, but then I was like, all right, sometimes you just have to go to Google because DuckDuckGo doesn't know. Excuse me, have some tea. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm still looking. And I was really convinced. I was like, you know, Blazard server is kind of an, a, a, a weird one in my mind. It's like maybe, and no one talks about it in their documentation. So I'm like, for all I know, it's not supported by validation. I cannot believe I'm still looking into it. Ooh, looks like I figured it out. 
Ah, there we go. Okay, I figured it out. Thank God. Happy. My mouse is flying. I mean, we're at eight times speed, so that's, that's going to happen. I can remove the shush. <laughs> All right, now I'm back in business making characters. So, yeah, this is just the first form. This is making characters. I end up... Something else I thought about, we'll see later. I, so there is a... a if you've done Angular development, there's um, Angular, sorry, Google Materials for Angular, right? Google did their whole materials thing. Everyone was very excited for a month. I don't know. Um, but, it, but it does offer you a great way to, to throw modals. And it's a good system for handling modals, and just popping up modals. Uh, there is a similar thing for Blazor called Blazor Modal. I decided not to use it. I just didn't want to have to deal with more libraries. I don't know. It's like, I'll just do pages. So. Every action, you know, you make a new character, go to a page. When you edit a character, go to a new page. When you check off a dungeon, later on we'll see. Um, because, as I mentioned, the dungeons, you do a lot of them as part of a quest line. Um, I wanted it to then ask you, okay, what's the next dungeon? And I could have coded in the quest lines into the game. Or, sorry, not into the game, but into this tool. But, I mean, they change things. They release new content, they release new dungeons, and they actually do change those quests. So I didn't want to have to keep up with that. And it's like, it's fine. Um, and those aren't the only reasons, um, or the only quests that send you on dungeons. There's uh, one that uh, Blueberry, my highest level character, she's doing where you have to revisit some of these dungeons with like these extra crazy requirements. Um, so yeah, I just, there's, there's too many things I was like, I'm just not going to worry about trying to make that. Looks like I was probably copying stuff from another project. Looks like I'm entering a new character to test. There's Sabrasil. That's my IOP. That's the only one that's not a plant name. So Sabrasil was actually one of the few characters where I had, um, and I don't know if they still do this, but you can ask Dofus to generate or, or suggest a name for you. Well, I mean, it's only fun awesome here. Yeah, so you may have seen the, God, it's funny keeping up. I'm like switching topics all the time. Anyway, Sabrasil was a, was a Dofus suggested name. I think I made some quotes. Um, yeah, I was considering not installing Font Awesome. I was like, I really want the lock icon like I have in um, my markdown. I probably could have used emojis, but I was like, I, I've used Font Awesome before. Um, I made a video for installing Font Awesome in an RPG game. I was like, well, I just should just use Font Awesome. Um, it was, I, I paused for a moment on those CSS variables. I didn't know, I've been doing CSS for like fucking ever, and I, I didn't realize that var, um, I've just sworn in this video, so I don't know what's gonna, what that's going to do. YouTube's going to suggest this video differently because I just swore, but I'm not editing. Um, so it stays in there. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that with a var, you could have a fallback value. So, so in CSS, you can say, you know, color, colon, var, give a variable name, but if, if it can't find that variable, comma, here's a fallback value. I had no idea you could do that with CSS var. I'm like, how did I not know that? Was that added later? And I, I don't know. So I thought, um, but anyway, apparently Fawn Awesome was relying on that. So that's why I found out. Looks like I'm adding some colors just to make things look a little prettier. Got it. <laughs> the screen off the bottom. Uh, it is funny watching this all in, uh, Sped up. Looks like there's an update. I think, yeah, this is a, a minor annoyance. Um, so Ryder recently, not super recently, but oh, some fun styling issues. They uh support Unreal. Um, like they have tie-ins with Unreal, and they have like this Unreal plugin that comes bundled and always wants to update. And I'm like, can I just install you? I I'm not going to do Unreal development. Stop harassing me with Unreal plugin updates. Um, but you know, you, you can't uninstall it. Uh, anyway, that's <laughs> besides the point. Um, hmm, and it looks like Blueberry's not in here. I must have developed, uh, deleted her. Okay, it looks like I'm going to do the base editing. Um, so yeah, you can change. You can change your character's name. You can change your character's class. Uh, that is a feature now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the pencil icon. I was like, why is the pencil icon not working? It's because I have only the free font awesome, and not all the icons are, are available. I tried to use a, a paid pencil icon, apparently. Um, but anyway, so I have a, um, an edit thing. Um, to edit just kind of the core information about a character, which is level, which we'll edit more often. Probably I should have done that separately. Um, but also class and the elements. The element build is... So, I don't know. I've been playing Dofus for a long time. Um, and in the early days, there was like no respecking. Um, every class was very limited to just a couple elements, maybe even only one element for a lot of them. Uh, there were definitely builds you were supposed to go to, and if you didn't do them, your character was just screwed, and you were going to have to delete them and start over again from scratch. Um, they're way more friendly. I mean, as years have gone on, all games have gotten more friendly, and, and Dofus is no exception. And so you can now, like, create 
whole sets, and I know that WoW does this too. You can you 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 know you you can do a whole new build with with different spells arranged and different equipment and different stats. I think I think you do different stats in Dofus too. Um, so uh, there is no reason to have your characters really be like, oh, this I they only have the one build. But I don't know because I've been playing Dofus for so long, um, and my friend is the same way. Uh, I, I just have the one build for the character. I never switch. Actually, she switches more than I do. She's she's doing that modern Dofus a little better than I am. Um, and she's way ahead of me. She has like multiple level 200 characters, and I've been playing this game since early 2000s, and I haven't, no one has gotten that level. Because <laughs> I don't care, because I'm just having fun. Um, looks like I'm doing the element editing. I did end up having some interesting problems with um, a custom input, as I recall. Yeah, you can see I'm using nullable reference types. That's because it's the right thing to do. You should always use nullable reference types. And make warnings as errors nullable. <laughs> That's a good idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, this was really obnoxious. So you see those errors down there. Those errors are a lie. They pop up only when I try to apply changes to not have to restart the application every time. This is a problem I've noticed with Blazor. It must be MS Build. Visual Studio and, and Rider both complain about this. But if you have a component in a namespace, but there's no code behind, so you've never explicitly said namespace. Here's the namespace in your code, if you haven't done that. Then other parts of the code are like, that namespace doesn't exist. It, it's, and this this front, like this, you know, this code gets um, compiled behind the scenes. It's source generated. They're using source generation behind the scenes to turn your HTML component into C sharp. In much of the same, I mean, right, that's how like all these JS frameworks do it too. You turn the component into JS. They're all JS, JSX, whatever view they're all the same um so anyway there doesn't seem to be aware of the source generation so when you hit apply it's like i can't because this thing is referencing a namespace that doesn't exist i think only when you hit apply i don't know if that apply issue is only true for writer and not for visual studio um i primarily use writer i, yeah, I almost never use visual studio anymore but writer is i don't know all ides suck but I think writer sucks the least. Like they all have problems, and some of it is MS Build's fault. So it's not even always the IDE's fault. But there's just none of them are perfect. There's always problems. Um, but I I like Writer better overall. It has better support for Blazor too, which I feel like is an embarrassment for Microsoft. Like they should like especially when it comes to nullable stuff. Visual Studio is like I don't care what you do in the end. <laughs> it's really bad. I can't believe that they. I don't know. They need to work on it. It is interesting. I, I wonder how. I'd be so curious to know the behind the scenes. I'm like, who's setting the priorities? I'm sure that they get pressure to like tie with Azure, for example, because that's where they make money. But like, how are they deciding what, what you know, should Blazor get focused? I don't know. I'm sure that I could find talks and stuff. If you know any, let me know. I'd love to know. I'll watch that stuff. I'll watch it at work, especially. All right, looks like I'm working on, I think this might be the, oh, and it looks like I'm still doing some styling. So I just didn't like this list look. Um, yeah, I'm not using any CSS framework. I'm using Font Awesome. I'm not using, um, oh, what is it? Why am I blanking now? Bootstrap, uh, Tailwind, Bulma. Uh, I used, when, when Bootstrap first came out, it was very exciting. Everyone was losing their mind. Bootstrap, Bootstrap, Bootstrap. Everyone's website should look like Twitter. Um, and it is really good, but I feel like the bigger your project gets, the more you run into like, Oh, but the drop down doesn't play well with the pop up, or oh, I want to customize a little bit. And you're like, oh, does it really work with, you know, it's, it was kind of historically meant for jQuery. I mean, they've made that better now, but you're like, oh, I want to use with Angular. Okay, we have to get something else. Is it going to work with Blazor? I don't know. You're going to have to do a lot of your work yourself. I don't know. I feel like as soon as you go just a little bit outside the lines they've drawn, it's just more trouble than it's worth. For something small like this, it would have been a good choice. Um, but I'm used to working on longer lived projects, I guess. And yeah, I really think the longer your project lives, the more you just end up fighting with a J with one of those like styling frameworks. And it would have been better to have just done it from scratch. Um, so I don't know. So, so I'm used to not using them and whatever. Maybe it would have made a five hour video, a four hour video. I don't know. For a small tool like this, it would have been perfect. I, like I should have used it. Um, I'm just used to not. So anyway, let's see. I wonder what I'm at, what I'm doing here. It is interesting, something else uh, I guess I'll say about Blazor Server, um, another kind of, it, like speaking of pits of success, I, I was saying before that for Blazor, like you really need to, you really need to know your C sharp and be comfortable debugging and digging into stuff, trying to figure out what's going on. 
more so than other frameworks just because of how the, the IDE support isn't as good and the, and the debugging, the error messages are at times utterly useless. <laughs> um, another thing with Blazor Server, I think in particular, is if you haven't done APIs and you're not really used to cleanly separating like front end from back end logic, it's really easy to get yourself in a place where you're writing very bad code. And I did some of that for um, RPG game. When it was called Pet Game, I made a video of like, oh my goodness, there's a really bad bug in Pet Game. And like, I kind of knew when I was when I was coding it, but I was like, ah, it's a small project. Um, and it's so much more convenient, especially for something that's meant to teach. I really want RPG game to be for people who don't know a lot of C sharp necessarily. And so I wanted to keep the code simple. But you really need a little more structure, you really have to keep your like, like, make no assumptions. Remember to never trust user input. It's like, yes, never trust user input. I know that. I know it so well. I have to fight with people about it's like, you can't trust user input. <laughs> Just because you said it's a number doesn't mean it's going to be a number. They could enter anything. Just because the, the input says, you know, type number, that doesn't mean anything. People can, can screw around. Um, so anyway, so I know, but even even though I know, I still was like, oh, but it's just so easy to, to do the wrong thing in Blazor server. Um, so I think that's another place where like, you really have to know your stuff to, to use Blazor server well. And even if you do, <laughs> I don't know, I like to think I know what I'm doing, but you know, I screw up too. So. Anyway, but Blazor, but yeah, I mean, you know, pros and cons to everything. Um, Blazor server is very convenient. Um, the ease with which you can do things is also a benefit, right? It's, it is easy to make a quick thing like this. <laughs> it looks like I'm giving. So for Almanac's progress, um, <laughs> you can notice those silly percents. I don't like, I'm not interested in maintaining the exact count out of 365 that they have. It changes too often. I'm just going to do it and I don't want to update all the time. But I am more interested in like roughly what percent. Um, and you know, the people who are like 80, 90%, that's what I'm going to prioritize. The people who are like just started, if it's a hard almanac today, I'm going to be like, never mind. Um, so, anyway, so that's what those enum values were there. Looks like I'm entering blueberry again. And testing out dungeon notes. So in addition to noting, hey, this is a dungeon to do, sometimes there are other constraints um, for some of the higher level stuff. And so I wanted to have an, an optional, like here's some optional notes. So here you can, it's flashing by so quickly, but I need to do the penguin dungeon again, but I need to do it with a particular idol, which is a system they're getting rid of soon. Um, but you know, whatever, they're gonna come up with some, some replacement. So a notes field still seems useful. And who knows what you wanna put in there? Maybe you wanna put in why, you know, I don't know. Because there are a few different uh, quests that have you do dungeons, of course, besides just those two quest lines that push you through a ton of them. Um, so, so anyway, I, yeah, I've got a notes field. Yeah, it looks like, a, oh yeah, so I went back and forth here. I'm like, oh, should it be different lists? But I was like, no, I just want it to look like my markdown document and just list it all out. Um, so I end up removing these headers. I, you'll see when the page comes up, it's going to have little like section headers for these are the dungeons and whatever, but I get rid of it all. I don't know if I can control Z or, or what, but in fact, it looks like I already did. <laughs> so I already decided. That's interesting. Where did, I thought it came up on screen. Maybe I never got there. All right. Don't know what I'm doing now. I mean, I could be talking. I wonder how far in through the video I am. I don't actually know. Um, yeah, I can pull this up. Oh, it looks like I'm about three quarters through. So should be wrapping up pretty soon. Ooh, I saw a tuple there. It looked like a four element tuple. I don't remember what that was for. Edit characters. Okay, so here's where I'm doing, yeah, update dungeon progress. This is where I want you to be able to check off a dungeon, and we'll see me test this. I, I have little checkbox icons on all of the little items here, like the dungeons, all the little unlocked areas. Um, and when you click check, I'm done with the dungeon, it says, great, you're done with the dungeon. Do you want to add a follow-up dungeon? Or do you want to cancel? Did you not mean to press check? Um, but yeah, if so, do you also want to add a follow-up dungeon, which again is for those quest lines. Um, something you can't undo, so you can mess up and it doesn't ask you, is if you check off like, yeah, I completed Forgost, or I have access to Forgost. I should say not completed, but it's just, do you have access? So if you say, yeah, I have access to Forgost, and you click that, it just goes, great, you have access, and there's no way to put it back that you don't have access. <laughs> so I should probably put some way to modify that in. Um, but I don't know. At the, at the, as far as is done in this video, there is no way to, to put those locks back. So. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader, listener, whatever, uh, to do that. Execute update. Okay, so I wish I remembered. This is a new feature of Entity Framework that I need to remember to use more. They have these things to do, they're kind of designed for bulk updates. So if you've used an ORM before, like Entity Framework or um, I don't know, Symphony on the PHP side, um, 
you may know that they're very bad at doing bulk updates. They're really built on this notion of a row is an object, you fetch a row, you update it, you save it, it, it is an object, and it is, in theory, an entity with, with, with business rules on it, maybe. Uh, I almost never see, I don't know. I, I more often see them as, as dumb data objects. Um, but, but anyway, regardless, that's no good for doing bulk updates, and that is a common complaint people have. It's like, oh, I just have to break down to SQL when I want to do a bulk update. They finally fixed that um, with Entity Framework 7, and the interface is interesting, and it's, and it's new, and I don't always think to use it, but I think it's not just good for bulk updates. It's, it's just a little more of an efficient thing of like, look, I know the ID. I just want to update that row. I don't want to fetch the thing into a, you know, I don't want to fetch the data and update it. I just want to make an update. Just let me make an update. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I use that a couple times. Um, it's already gone by now, long gone, since I was talking. Um, <laughs> but but anyway, so I, I use that in a couple places. Um, I don't know. If I was going to do this over again, I'd use it more often. But I mean, and there's plenty of cases where you do fetch the data. But speaking of, again, keeping your never trust user input, just because in one part of the page you fetched an entity, and kept a bunch of data locally, that doesn't mean by the time they hit the button that that row still exists in the database. It could be gone. So you're going to need to re-verify that the data they're operating on still exists and is in a valid state. Um, and yeah, so so I don't know. You, you have to refetch a lot of times anyway, I guess is what I'm saying. Or at least verify you know any existence thing, and then, and then you can do the, the update. Or maybe with the update, you have the rules, right? You say where all these things, and that's and I think that's that, that's what I actually do in one of the instances, at least. So I'm doing input checkbox, add follow-up dungeons. That's what I was talking about. Once you check off a dungeon, I'll have it ask you. Oh, and here's where I realized, yeah, you can see me. So I realized, like, oh, they're case sensitive. Uh. <laughs> so I changed the hand entered ones to be um, capital, and then go, oh, okay, it works now. Um, yeah, that was frustrating. That was really silly. Um, I don't know, I thought about putting code in there, and I tested it where I had like two lowercase, two lowercase, make sure it matches the string. I was like, no, this is like, I don't know, this is just a SQLite thing. I'm not going to put, turn what should be GUIDs in your database. I'm not going to call too lower on them. That shouldn't even be a valid operation on a GUID. They should be stored as, as, as bytes, like raw bytes under the hood. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I just fixed my hand enter data. So anyway, if you do use this and you decide to hand enter data, make sure your GUIDs are in all uppercase. Um, or, or you'll get very confused because a lot of things will work, but some will. <laughs> that didn't take me nearly as long to figure out as the validation thing where I had deleted. Ah, Blazor server JS. All right, so the dungeon, yep. Yeah, so looks like I was testing out the UI there. It went by really quick. I was able to catch it because I know it was there, but here it is, and follow up dungeon, gone already. That's a downside of doing this at 10 times speed. I don't know. If I cared a little more, maybe I would like have a way to pause on at sections or something, but I'm not. I don't know. Maybe if I keep doing videos in this format. All right. What's going on here? Furunoshi. Yep. Wanted to make sure. So you can see why right, we got check boxes on those things. I went back and forth on like, do I want, do I want an edit button for like the whole section? Like, like, like for all the locked you know, regions, like you can see in the upper left now. Odomai Island for Goss and Kandal. Here, now we can see the page. Oh, okay, it's covered. Um, I thought about maybe there should be like a whole, um, like a pencil for that whole section hovered onto the right side. Um, and that's why I started doing that thing where I split them off by sections, because like, oh, I'll put it in the header, kind of like I have the pencil on the header for the whole character. But I don't know. I couldn't make up my mind on the UI and was like, look, I can't spend forever on this. I just need it to work. Um, so... Anyway, something else that maybe you could improve. I, I, the UI, I mean, it works, right? It's functional, but the fact that the check mark boxes or the check marks all kind of don't line up, <laughs> it offends, uh, I don't know, some minor OCD sense, probably in most humans. Um, so anyway, that's a thing you clean up. And this isn't super great. This was making me wish that for the unlockable regions that I did do that as like a, another table with a relation. Um, right. Here we are using records as you should when possible. Records are great, um, especially for front end frameworks. It's super true. If you've done JS frameworks, um, you're used to the spread operator when you want to modify state of an object because you need a whole new object um, for the same reason as, as in C sharp. When you have a reference to an object and you ask code, hey, is this reference different? It's going to say, no, the reference is the same. And you're like, yeah, but is the data different, right? And the, right, and the way to get around that is you make a new instance of the object. And in JavaScript, you'd use a spread operator. In 
C Sharp, you use records. I think they've said that they are going to give classes the same features as records. That's kind of the plan. I don't know what the timeline is for that, um, which would be awesome. But yeah, for now, it's records. Looks like they've got check marks on dungeons. That's good. So I can. And I think, right, and unlocking regions. I guess, oh, <laughs> I decided to alphabetize them in the, um, in the enum. Uh, so here I open up and I start doing data entry for a bunch of my characters. I think this is where I do it. Here I said logging into the characters and being like, okay, what are they actually? Yeah, so here is me. I'm, we're basically at the end. I'm inserting um, more rows. I decided to delete that maybe one quarter, I think, or okay, about a third. Um, but I just go in and log all the characters, make sure there's nothing I missed, right? Like, okay, I think I'm done, but let's try and add all my characters and see if I go, oh no, I missed something. I can't log the details of this character. One thing I didn't do, and you may notice in the markdown, is the professions. Um, so the different professions. Um, uh, like Blueberry's got the highest level. She's maxed on um, a few. Alchemy is one of them. Um, and so for, for crafting some things, a lot of things, it doesn't matter how high level you are, a low-level character making a like, a like a potion that takes you back to town. Um, it's not exactly what it does, but whatever. Uh, it's, a, it's a recall potion. It takes you to a, a safe point, but commonly a town. Anyway, it doesn't matter how high level your character is when you make those. It makes no difference. Um, but if your level character is very high level, um, in alchemy, they're not going to get any experience for making that kind of potion. So I like to hand the work down to characters because you do get some little passive benefits for leveling up a profession for your character. You can carry more. That's what you get. You can carry more stuff and there's achievements and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I like to pass down um, ingredients for low level alchemy, especially because I'm always making recall potions um, to characters that don't have high level alchemy. So anyway, I would like to store um, some information about um, professions in here. I didn't add that to the tool. And I only recently started doing that on my um, Markdown document anyway, because I, I was like, oh, who is the second highest level alchemist? I couldn't remember her and was bumping around. Yeah, I think it is Fennel My Cross. She's kind of second highest level on everything, but like it's still crazy level or low level. Here I was checking, it's like, oh, Purple Cloak, could I make that? You know, it's going to be annoying. Never mind. <laughs> the, the Daily Almanacs. Um, so yeah, and I'm just recording the rest of these. I think there's, I, I, to my memory, there's one more tweak I make at the end, but it's possible I just do that and I didn't record it. I mean, like I do make the readme for the project and the Git repository and all this stuff. I don't do that on screen. Maybe I should have. Maybe that would have been interesting. If that sounds interesting to you, let me know because I, I would be inclined to skip that, I think. But if the, the process, maybe you can see me checking off who has access to what. Yeah, because someone was like, what? You don't have Pregas? Is that true? Let me check. Yeah, you've got the Zap. You do too have access. So I, I don't know. My notes were a little out of date. Um, so anyway, but yeah, if, if seeing, I don't know, the use of GitHub, I don't know, is of interest or making a readme, I don't know, I could do that on screen in the future. Oh, so what am I doing? Oh, I'm adding filtering. That's the other thing. So yeah, so as I was saying, what often happens, and this was like part of why I wanted this, is that my friend's like, hey, do you have any characters who have, I don't know, the Coolidge dungeon? And I'll scroll through and, and you know, keep an eye out and I'll see Coolidge. So I was like, I just want to be able to search for that. I should just be able to search in the text field, start typing a name. And again, I don't care if you have a thousand characters, every single keystroke I can filter. Computers can count to a thousand real fast. <laughs> so I just made it as fast as possible. Yeah, here's bind. I end up changing some things. Um, yeah, bind after. I haven't used bind after often. Um, that's if you want to run a function after the binding has happened. Uh, I wonder if Angular has that by now. It's been a while since I, I don't think I'm up to date on like the very latest version of Angular anymore. I haven't done Angular in a bit. Um, yeah, here it is. I think this might be where I'm done. Actually, is the video done? Yeah, this is it. And this is, this is the video. So, so there you go. Yeah, there's a little dungeon filter on top that searches. Unfortunately, we don't have a pause and I can order by name or level or whatever. I don't know why. Um, looks like I didn't get the elements added for Braska. Don't know why. But anyway, there you go. There's there's the uh, <laughs> there's the the thing. Um, I hope that was interesting. Again, the source code for this project is available on GitHub. There's a link in the description. It's a super permissive license. If you want to do anything with this, have a blast. Go for it. It, it is yours. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.